Celebrities often have a marked impact on popular culture. Some may even have the presence and fortitude to dictate that consequential effect, but very few have had the lasting impression as David Bowie did after pushing boundaries across a career spanning over half a century. His influence spread much further than the multiple music genres he revolutionized but extended to art, fashion, and the self-expression of his fans through their formative years, from the unsuccessful beginnings to the soaring heights of fame, and even to his tragic death foreshadowed by his art. David Bowie was a beacon of reinvention and unapologetic originality. There were very few avenues of entertainment that David Bowie hadn't tried, let alone mastered, as a singer, songwriter, actor, composer, producer, dancer, and all-around showman. He brought a level of theatricality and creativity that has inspired and laid the foundations of every artist that has followed since. The Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award that he received in 2006 almost didn't do his work justice. However, nothing good happens overnight, and that was certainly the case with David Bowie, whose youth and early career was fraught with failure, setbacks, and sidetracks. David Bowie was born as David Robert Jones on January 8, 1946, to Haywood and Margaret Jones. Raised in the post-war London suburb of Brixton, his mother was a waitress and his father was a charity promotions officer. Even from an early age, David yearned to escape the stifling conditions of the working-class South London suburbs and saw his passion of music as the means to do so. By the age of 13, he was playing saxophone and listening to his half-brother's rock and roll records. I wanted to be a musician because it seemed, um, it seemed rebellious, it seemed subversive. David's half-brother Terry played a pivotal role in his music, both early on through exposure to rock music and beat literature, which formed his initial sound. And later, after his battle with schizophrenia and resultant suicide as the dramatic inspiration for several of David's original songs like All of Mad Men and Jump They Say. At the age of six, David and the family moved to the town of Bromley in Kent, where at 16 he graduated from Bromley Technical High School. During his schooling, David's singing voice was considered average, but received far more accolades for his dance, art, and instrumental ability. It was at that age that David got into a fight with his friend George Underwood. The two fought over a girl, and in the process, David was seriously injured after being punched in the eye. My fist and his face made contact, which was saying. Unfortunately, um, uh, I caused a bit of damage to his eye, and I, that was not the intention at all. He needed several surgeries and was hospitalized for four months. And as a result, he was left with a permanently dilated pupil in his left eye. Though it hinders his death perception, it gave him an otherworldly appearance of someone with two eyes of different colors and shapes. This look became iconic during his rise to fame, being so magnetic and photogenic that in hindsight, Bowie conceded that he probably should thank George for hitting him. Later on, David said to me, I did him a favor. So, I mean, a lot of people think it's quite an interesting thing to have two different colored eyes. After high school, David Bowie began his career as a commercial artist, but experienced several false starts. He formed, recorded, and went nowhere with several bands during his late teens, such as the Conrads, Davy Jones and the Lower Third, and Davy Jones and the original King Bees, all of whom proved unremarkable. At this point, David underwent his first reinvention by changing his name. Concerned that he may be mistaken for Davy Jones from the 1960s band The Monkees, David changed his last name to Bowie, inspired by the knife developed by the 19th century American pioneer Jim Bowie. In addition, David seemed lost on stage and so began the trademark creation of his outlandish onstage personas. As it follows, he studied mime to improve his stagecraft. For him, this disassociation between himself and his character made it far easier to perform with confidence. I was not a natural performer. I didn't feel at ease on stage. But I felt really comfortable going on stage with somebody else. And it seemed a, a rational decision to keep on doing that. In 1967, Bowie recorded his first solo album, which, like the string of bands beforehand, proved unsuccessful. He retreated to a Buddhist monastery in Scotland for several weeks, before returning to London again, looking for work as an actor, performer, and composer. Again, he wasn't met with success, and at this point in life, David Bowie was broke and reliant on the help of his friends. Despite years of failure and having every reason to quit, David still spent all his time focused on his dream of being a musician. At the beginning of 1969, Bowie again returned to his full-time music and finally made his big break, signing with Mercury Records. At the time, inspired by Stanley Kerberg's 2001 A Space Odyssey, David wrote his breakout hit, Space Oddity. 
The song's popularity soared in the wake of the world's entrancement with NASA's voyage of discovery to the moon, further fueled by the BBC using the single during its coverage of the Apollo 11 moon landing. Years later across the world, this single would reach number 15 on the charts in the US. It was around this time David met and married his first wife, the American-born Angela Barnett, within a year. They were married on March 20, 1970. The two had one son together, Duncan, who they nicknamed Zoe. The marriage lasted 10 years before divorcing in 1980. David Bowie had an incredible talent of writing hits, and writing plenty of them. Despite the success of Space Oddity, many considered the song a novelty. However, over the years that followed, Bowie released the albums The Man Who Sold the World in 1970 and Hunky Dory in 1971. The popularity of these albums cemented his name in the charts and catapulted him into stardom. Bowie increased in fame, his image became more and more androgynous, and he conveyed an increasing amount of sexual ambiguity. His image not only served to keep critics and fans guessing, but also to speak on those who were gay, different, or outrageous, saying quite simply, it's okay to be you. And he most definitely practiced what he preached, wearing dresses to press conferences in Texas, or posing in a ball gown from an album cover. Such liberal expressions weren't as common then and his efforts eased the way for artists to go against conservative norms in the future. His style was a precursor to the glam rock era, as was his sound to the early alternative rock era, two art forms that owe their origins to David Bowie, demonstrating through his actions that you don't need to hide who you are. With the introduction of his next album, The Rise and Fall of Ziggy Stardust and the Spiders from Mars in 1972, the world was also introduced to David Bowie's newest persona, Ziggy Stardust, his imagining of a doomed rock star. The wild, futuristic costumes along with the new take on rock music stunned and captivated fans with undiluted glam rock. The title of the album, however, proved prophetic, as just one year later, David Bowie shelved Ziggy Stardust and disbanded the Spiders from Mars. Not only is it, not only is it the last show of the tour, but it's the last show that we'll ever do. Thank you. Opting for a new character, the Thin White Duke. Despite this, in true Bowie form, they released an avalanche of new music over the following years. In 1973, Aladdin Sane was released, with the collaborations of Mick Jagger and Keith Richards. In 1974 came David Live, and in 1975, Young Americans. The song Fame, co-written with John Lennon, hit number one on the US charts, the first of David Bowie's songs to do so. Being the multi-dimensional entertainer that he was, David wasn't content in just creating music. His theatrical presence and love of film allowed him to work as an actor also. In 1976, he landed the title role in The Man Who Fell to Earth, wherein he played an alien who found himself stuck on Earth. He conquered Broadway in 1980 in The Elephant Man, wherein he received critical acclaim. The following year, he played Jareth, the Goblin King, in the cult classic fantasy adventure film Labyrinth, directed by George Lucas. Later on in his career, Bowie reserved himself for smaller cameo roles, starring in other movies such as Zoolander, The Prestige, and was the intended villain to be cast in Blade Runner 2049 and 2017. It was around this time Bowie sacked his longtime manager Tony DeFries following a contract dispute. The two received a 50-50 split of all royalties, and DeFries was funding their lavish New York celebrity lifestyle with Bowie's share. So much so that despite several number one hits, after five years Bowie came to realize that he had very little money. From then on, David Bowie took his financials into his own hands and proved himself a more than capable businessman. Much later in 1997, David released Bowie Bonds, which were asset-backed securities of current and future revenues of the 25 albums and 287 songs that Bowie recorded before 1990. Oddly enough, these turned out to be his most popular creation. By forfeiting 10 years worth of royalties, Bo received an upfront payment of $55 million USD. He then used this income to buy songs owned by his former manager Tony DeFreeze. The bonds liquidated in 2007, and the rights to the income from the songs reverted to Bowie. His entrepreneurial spirit didn't stop there. In September 1998, Bowie launched an internet service provider, BowieNet, an early dial-up service that offered exclusive content, despite being a pioneer, that service shut down in 2006. Now out on his own, Bowie released a new album, Scary Monster, in 1980, which featured the single Ashes to Ashes, a sort of updated version of his earlier space oddity. Bowie's musical career languished over the following decade. He bounced between acting and musical projects, forming a new group called Tin Man, which proved to be unsuccessful. 
On April 24, 1992, Bowie married Somali-American supermodel Iman, and he released the album Black Tie White Noise in 1993 as a wedding gift to her. David was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1996. He then went through a period where he shied away from the public eye, doing few public performances and shows. In 2014, David was diagnosed with liver cancer, but chose to keep his information private so that the public was unaware. He then began to work on what would become his final album, his swan song. In true Bowie fashion, this album Black Star was released on January 8, 2016, Bowie's 69th birthday, and was met with critical acclaim. New York Times critic John Perlis noted that it was a strange, daring, and ultimately rewarding body of work, with a mood darkened by bitter awareness of mortality. In the ultimate show of performance artistry, Bowie released an album alluding to his death, and just two days thereafter, the music icon passed away. As he had portrayed in his life struggles and beliefs through his art throughout his career, he even portrayed his impending death through tones of darkness and mortality in the final lyrics he created, a musical farewell. In the statement following his passing, we were left with these words of comfort. David Bowie died peacefully today, surrounded by his family after a courageous 18-month battle with cancer. He survived by his wife Iman, his son Duncan Jones, and daughter Alexandria, and his stepdaughter Zulika Haywood. Bowie also left behind an impressive musical legacy, which included 26 albums. Bowie himself had insisted that he did not want a funeral, and according to his death certificate, he was cremated in New Jersey on January 12th, and as he wished in his will, his ashes were scattered in Bali, Indonesia. The tributes that followed his death barely scratched the surface of the impact he had on the musical community and the world at large. Iggy Pop wrote on Twitter that David's friendship was the light of my life. I never met such a brilliant person. The Rolling Stones remembered him on Twitter as a wonderful and kind man and a true original. Kanye West tweeted, David Bowie was one of my most important inspirations. Madonna posted, this great artist changed my life. It goes to show that David Bowie was truly a generational artist, influencing countless people from every genre. And as they say in true Bowie fashion, he lived and died through his art until he took his very last breath. And in the end, the Starman returned to space.